What's going on you guys back again with another video as you can see behind me today We are going to be working on installing a sound system and it's going to be going into my 2018 Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road now one thing I will say I can't believe that I've waited this long Before doing this mod this is typically one of the first modifications I do to any and all of my cars before I dive um, straight into this install I'm gonna go ahead and just walk through with uh, all the products that we're gonna be using for this install and to make it a little easier for you guys, my audience watching, if you're curious of installing a similar system in your truck, I'm going to go ahead and link every single item that I used down below. So we're going to start with the two Rockford Fosgate P1 10 inch uh, subwoofers. And I believe I got them, I did, I got them in a single 4 ohm subwoofer or a single 4 ohm resistance. Um, that way I'm able to wire it down to a 2 ohm which I will explain and show you how I do that once I get to that step But basically what that means is that a 2 ohm load these two subwoofers will see the max power out of this Rockford Fosgate Prime R500 1D Now there's a couple reasons why I went with this amp one Rockford Fosgate of course two it's small and My subwoofer actually has a mounting area right there and three it's uh, rated for 500 watts RMS but typically the way Rockford Fosgate works is they get they they uh, create their amps and then they test them and the tested RMS power was 612 which is plenty because these put out 300 RMS so 600 RMS in total my amps gonna be giving it 612 as you can see there is the size of it very very small and very very fitting and it'll sit nice up on the box Eventually, I do plan on going with a four channel app just so I can get the best sound out of my speakers because let's be honest, the speakers on this truck, if you don't know, are really, really crappy. The magnets on them are, I mean, tiny, dude. So if I ever need it, or I should say eventually in the future when I'm ready, I do plan on going with a four channel setup so I can hook up all of my aftermarket or once I get aftermarket speakers all around just to complement the, the bass. I wanted to give a huge, huge shout out to a buddy of mine and fellow YouTuber, Jesse Rizzo. Make sure you check out his Tacoma and his sweet build on his channel, which I will link down below as well. But Jesse Rizzo gave me a great, great idea to go with this subwoofer company. They gave you the, they give you the, the chance to basically customize your box however you want it. And they even give you an option to give you an extended depth in here, which I believe it's an extension by 5 sixteenths of an inch, which isn't much, but when you're working with such a tight space in the truck and small subwoofers, it's kind of hard and you really want as much space as you can get so you can ensure that the subwoofer will fit. I myself already tested that these P1s would fit. Now the P2s I believe, originally my, my plan was P3s, I love the P3s. The P2s would have been a very, very tight fit and I probably wouldn't have been able to use them. So instead of just taking the risk, I went ahead and just went with the P1s. I figured 600 watts RMS would be plenty. So that's what we got going on. Again, I will link the website for these subwoofer enclosures down below. Moving on, another huge shout out to Jesse Rizzo. After watching one of his videos, he uh, he showed how he got this low output converter, which I think is great. Basically what this does is you replace the stock wire harness from the radio to the truck with this, and this basically gives you an RCA out right there and also a remote wire which is freaking great now for my wiring harness I went with sky high audio their wiring harness just looks freaking killer dude these clamps are awesome OFC 4 gauge is what I'm gonna be running which should be plenty for 600 watts RMS and then eventually when I do plan on and when eventually when I do get my 4 channel app I'll go ahead and just get a distributor two fuses and run it that way well enough talking you guys let's dive right into this install the truck has a lower seat and then an upper backing seat. They're two different pieces. As you can see, this lifts right up. And to remove these two fronts, it looks like it's just two small bolts holding it in, three bolts on that side, and then we unbolt and drop the back seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two, the bottom and upper seat, and then I'll move on to removing this backing plate, which now has to come out for the box to sit in place, and I'll show you guys once I get there. update that is the back panel that sits behind the seats which allows you to get more storage now I know what you're thinking this is probably a lot of storage that I'm losing but 
I've had this truck for a little over a year now and I've never once used this back storage. I've used it a little bit on this side just to get her little seat cover in there, but I can always relocate that elsewhere. As you can see, it's just a bunch of, I think it's three bolts on each side. Which is this, these here. Three bolts on each side and then a bunch of these little plastic pop-off pieces. So, just remove those bolts and pop it off. I went ahead and test fit the subwoofer box already. As you can see, it sits nice and snug. And then if you look in here, this plastic piece where the backing used to tie into actually snugs up right up against the box. So, looking pretty freaking good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount my amp down here. Um, we'll see if I have any space there. Um, if I absolutely have to, I'll go up here. I just wanna make sure that the seat's not gonna hit it. I would hate to have to install it there, drill it in, and then have the seat hit, and then have to redo it all over again and move it down lower. So if worse comes to worse, I'll mount it here, and I'll have it so the wires face this way, so my wires can come up, over, and in there. And my phone is blowing up, goddammit. But, so far so good. Now that I know that this box fits and everything will go in place, we're going to move on to the wiring. Which is probably the hardest part and the most tedious. We'll go ahead and pop my hood and set up for that and I'll show you and tell you exactly what you got to do. So before I move on to um, installing or running my power wire from the front battery all the way back through the cabin. I'm going to go ahead and install my low output converter. Once again, basically all this does is it gives you an RCA and it also gives you a remote wire. The remote wire tells your amp when to start and your amp will start whenever you have the radio on. Your low output converter which is your RCA is your RCA is basically send the signal on what sounds and frequencies to play um, to the amplifier now I will say you guys I'm using sky high audio like I said earlier and honestly in all the years that I've been installing I mean I've been installing since I was maybe 16 so that's what that's 10 years now for the last 10 years I will say I've never used such a high quality kit like sky audios at the same time in the last 10 years I've never paid as much as I did for a wiring kit like I did for Sky Audio, but it's well worth it. I mean, geez, even their 14 gauge, even, I mean, I'm sorry, even the remote gauge is a 14 gauge OFC twisted, um, copper twisted remote cable. I mean, it's beefy as hell. Um, a little, maybe a little bit of an overkill, but hey, why not? So anyways, diving right back into it. All we're gonna do to install this piece, from my understanding, this is all just a pop out. Yep, see I didn't even need a tool. All I did was grab and pull evenly all around. And there you go. Once you get to this point, you have four bolts holding the radio in place and that is pretty much. Yep, there you go. Like I said, just make sure that all the wires add up. So it has two over, one under, one over. the harness plugged in and ready to go now before we run our RCAs I will point out one thing and these last 10 years of mine that I've always that I've been installing car audio systems I've always found it best to run your RCAs on the opposite side of your power wire now the reason for is you don't want to you want to try to avoid to get any engine noise which can also um, complement or go along with having a proper grounding cable on the amplifier itself but to avoid any engine noise, to avoid any static noise coming through the RCAs, you want to run them on the opposite side of your power wire. My power wire is going to be on my driver's side, so I'm going to go ahead and connect my RCAs, connect my remote wire, run it through the back of the glove box to the bottom panels, run them all the way back, and meet them back there where the amp's going to go. Once I do that, we can put the radio back in place, bolt it up, close it all up, and then uh, we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and run those wires, and we'll pick it back up. So I got my wires ran over here off to the side as you can see it's all sitting on the passenger seat now all I got to do is run it behind the carpet or underneath the carpet I should say underneath the door trim panels and all the way to the back now a quick little tip just to help you guys get going on feeding the cable through the dash down onto the floor as you can see I just went ahead and grabbed a wire metal a, uh, a uh, metal hanger clothes hanger cut it ran it through the bottom came out the other side taped it all off together and then slowly started pulling it all the way through I really didn't catch this on camera but as you can see my power wire is already up at the battery and ran through that little grommet there 
Thankfully, in my specific situation, I've ran so many wires already through that grommet that the grommet itself was actually already kind of open and loose, which in this case is actually really good because it saves a lot of hard work. But as you can see, the wires already ran through. These door panels are already taken off. All these little panels, you guys, just simply pop off by little clips like those. And then um, the same goes for these little side ones here. I'll show you how easy it is to pull off the little door panel. Like that. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to run that blue wire up through here. Open up these little taps there. Run the blue wire or my 4 gauge power wire in there. Tap it closed up underneath the carpet and coming out right here. Little update as you can see I got my wire <clears throat> tucked. Ran nicely along the original or the OEM wire harness that's already in place. I got our 4 gauge power wire in the clips. Running through underneath this carpet out. And going out here, I'm not exactly sure if I want to tuck it in some more because I'm not sure where the amp's going to sit just yet. But that's pretty much it. One thing I did have to do, you guys, just uh, so you guys know, is I had to remove this uh, seatbelt bolt down here just to be able to pop this uh, trim piece up and be able to fit our wire nicely up underneath. As you can see, it's all back and tied in together. Before now, I go just... ahead and snap all this back to place and back together, I just remembered I also have to run the base booster wire for our amplifier our specific amplifier comes with this little base knob which basically just gives us the adjustability to control the gain of the base or of the amp on the fly with just a little nub which is that right there now looking back at it you guys it definitely would have been a lot easier to run this wire first and then my power wire on top of it so if you are doing this at home by yourself make sure you go that route run this one before you run your power wire it's going to be a little harder for me now but i'm gonna go ahead and do it run it on this same side and we'll pick it back up so as of right now i got two of the four wires that i need ran already i got my power wire i got my base knob control I got my ground wire already back here, which I'm just going to ground out to a point back here somewhere. Now all I need is my remote wire and my RCAs, and then install the speakers, connect the speakers, mount the amp, and we should be ready to go. Everything's all cleaned up on this side already. I don't know exactly where I want to mount this yet, this uh, bass sound. I think I want to do like a hidden setup where all I have is the knob sticking out either from like here or here. I was really wanting to go here with it, but on the back side of this, there just isn't enough room. So... I'm not quite sure where I'm going to mount this just yet. You do have the option to either just double sided sticky tape it up somewhere or use screws. I would prefer not to use screws and make any holes on this. I would rather make a hole on this little panel here. But we're not quite there yet so I'm going to go ahead and just leave that there for now. We're going to go ahead and flip the truck and then uh, start working on the passenger side. Alright you guys, so my RCA and remote wire are there. As you can see I just tucked it up underneath the carpet, have it running back out here into the clips into this little trim piece here, back out this way, underneath the carpet, and out right there. So we're pretty much now at the point where I need to verify and see where I'm going to mount my amp. That way I can cut all these wires to size, hook everything up. I still gotta find a ground. Now you guys, I cannot stress enough. One of the most important wires, and honestly I feel like it's the wire that can either make it or break it for your sound system, as far as the amp working and functioning properly, is your ground you got to verify and make sure i've had systems where i've installed it before and everything was installed right everything was working right everything was ran right but let me rephrase nothing was working right it wouldn't turn on i wouldn't get a signal nothing but everything was wired and hooked up and connected properly so ended up going to the ground changed up the ground cleaned up the ground and voila it all worked properly so i can't stress enough how important the ground is now the point and the best ground you can get is one that's directly off the chassis of the truck and one that's clean for example this is the mounting bolt for the seat belt and for the back seat for the seat I'm sorry for the seat belt back seat and the connection of the seat belt the plug-in here that goes here so now this will be a great grounding point however as you can see it's all painted we need to clear out and grind away all this paint sand off all this paint so it's bare metal, so it makes a bare metal connection with the truck. That right there will be a great ground. Uh, I'm going to look around elsewhere. I don't really see any other place. I guess I could go up here, but that would just be up high and you'd be able to see it. So 
Actually, I think I am gonna go there. And as a matter of fact, if I go over here, which is the same as here, that would work out great. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one since that one's already in place. And this one I gotta put in place when I install the seat. At least now I know that I can get to that one without the seat having to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go there, clean up that ground, and uh, that should be pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to that. I'm gonna see where I can mount this app. Once I verify where I wanna mount this app, I'll pick it back up. One of the great things about this Sky Audio wiring kit that I got is that all of the O-rings at the end of the, the terminals at the end of the wire come already pre-cramped, and it's a very, very snug and tight fit. As you can see, I went ahead and sanded out the hole, got rid of all that paint. I did not have sanding paper. Sanding paper will be plenty enough to get that sanded down. So I just went ahead and used my Dremel with a sanding bit at the end of it. As you can see, no more paint, all clean and smooth. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to mount that there. And then I'm going to go ahead and mount the buckles on top of it and get our grounding point right. Just a quick little update. I am kind of rushing here because I do have to go to work in a little bit and I really want to finish this and at least have the subs playing. So on my way to work, I can really enjoy it and kind of set the settings. As you can see, I went ahead and I mounted the amp, or actually I should say I'm going to mount. It's not mounted yet, but I'm going to mount the amp upside down simply because that way I can at least manage the wires coming in here. Now it is kind of a tight squeeze because of this big, thick 4-gauge. 8-gauge would have definitely been a lot easier to work with, but... 600 watts RMS, I wanted at least 4 gauge, that's just what I feel comfortable running, so I went ahead and ran the 4 gauge. Um, but as you can see, everything is mounted, everything is connected, my ground wire is to the ground, which is this black one here, back to our spot where I told you guys earlier. Uh, battery power coming from the front, which I still got to connect the fuse up front. Our remote wire, which is coming off of this side. RCA is coming off of this side as well. And then we got our base knob or base boost connection that's going to go there. Another reason why I wanted it to mount it upside down is also because now I have access to all my settings here. That's another reason why I think I'm going to wait to put the seats back in. I'm going to have a good listen to it. And then I could go back and adjust my settings and everything that I want to play with. My frequencies, my, my low input, my high input, uh, my gains, my base boost. Everything that I got to do, my frequency, I can do with it being upside down. I've done it this way just because I figured it was easier to plug everything in while I had it pushed out this way. Then I could just go ahead and push it back in, run my screws, and uh, that's pretty much it. As far as the subwoofer wiring, I did go ahead and already wire it, positive, negative, positive, negative. I still gotta go back in here and wire it in here once I get the subwoofers in place. But the way, the, the way I went ahead and did it is this Prime amp, this Rockford Fosgate Prime, is lowest it can handle as a two ohm load. Long story short, for ohm, it's basically just the resistance of the subwoofer. Uh, the lower the resistance, the higher the thump. The bigger the thump, the more power you can run to it. However, the lower the resistance, the more uh, capable it is, or the more it, it it's more open to damage to be damaged. So this uh, amp can handle a low of two ohms before it causes any sort of damage to the amplifier. So at a two ohm load, this amplifier will put out its full 612 watts RMS. I wired the subwoofers down to a two ohm load. The subwoofers themselves are a single four ohm load on each one. If you wire your positive to your positive and your negative to your negative and tie it in together on one channel like I did there, you get a two ohm load. Now the best way to the better way to would would be would be to do positive to positive and then one positive out to your speaker. One negative to one negative and then one negative out to your amp. That would be the better way, that would be the cleaner way, but in this case or in my case, I have no opening here in the middle. This is all just one solid piece of wood. So I'm making it work. You guys as you can see I connected my speaker wire on this side with just some terminals. It looked like that. Thankfully, I had a little kit laying around that had a bunch of them. So now I'm ready to connect my speaker on both sides. I'll connect the fuse. We'll test it out. It all works well. Then we'll mount them in place. Like I said, I'm kind of racing against time. So I'm kind of just diving in here and installing it myself and getting it done. As you can see, I got the fuse block already all connected, ready to go. It's not exactly where I would like it to be. I would like to clean all this up and make it a little prettier, but I can always do that later and readjust it. Everything is connected. Speakers are just sitting in place. They're not actually screwed down yet. We are about to do our first test turn on. So here we go. Let's see behind me. There it is. 
As you can see, we got power. I'm not sure if the camera's catching it or not, but we are on. As you can see, there it is. We are on here. Now, obviously, due to copyright, I am going to see and make sure that these work. I'm going to listen to some music. If it does work, then I'll come back and I'll play some music for you guys, but some uncopyrighted music that I actually use on my videos. So, let me make sure and test this, make sure it all works, and we'll pick it right back up. As you can see, it is the next day. Uh, just a quick little update. I had to wrap it up pretty quickly yesterday just because I did have to go to work, like I mentioned. I ended up having to remove the grill that goes there in front of the speakers. As you can see, it is a pretty tight fit. However, when these seats are all the way back, it does open up some room, plenty of room for the speaker not to hit or rub up on the seat. Now, when this is at full drop, as you can see, I can't right now because of this headrest, but when I do tilt the headrest and drop it all the way, the uh, only thing that actually touches the speaker is the carpet of the seat or the cloth of the seat. So I'm not too worried about that. The only thing I got to be careful of is to try not to bump it too hard when the seats are down, which is pretty much never. So everything came out pretty good. Everything still latches, everything's still in place. I ended up going ahead and putting my base boost knob here. Now the only reason why I just decided to go there is because like I said, I couldn't really find a place to do it on this panel like I would have liked. I thought about maybe taking apart the motherboard and just gluing the motherboard behind this uh, uh, pace, uh, one of these places or one of these pieces, and then putting the knob in front of it. But for now, that'll work, and uh, that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and show you guys kind of what it sounds like now. The video is obviously not going to do any justice to it, but let me tell you guys, I myself am very, very impressed and surprised that these two little tens actually hit as hard as they do. So I'll go ahead and show you that. As, like, as I said earlier, I can't really play copyrighted music, so I'm going to just have to go with this song that a buddy of mine actually created for our YouTube channel. So two shout out to him, two shout out to him and thanks. Like I said, the video is probably not going to do it any justice, but please believe it sounds good. There you go, you guys. That's pretty much it for this video. Uh, like I said, everything fit in pretty nicely for the most part. The subwoofers themselves, I feel like the uh, surrounding on the actual subwoofer is a little beefy, which is causing it to possibly hit a little at full flex. But like I said, for the most part, that's all plastic and cloth, so I'm not too, too worried or there's nothing sharp that can cause a hole. Um, but that's pretty much it. Pretty quick install, not too bad, not too hard. That freaking um, low output converter that connects to the OEM wire harness was an absolute lifesaver. So once again, huge shout out to Jesse Rizzo for showing that on uh, one of his videos. Make sure you check out his channel. That's pretty much it, you guys. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.